Welcome back to Set Streets and Eats, everybody. I am in front of Richard Milhouse Nixon's Presidential Library and Museum. This is located in Yorba Linda, which, uh, California, which is just outside, uh, about 40, 50 miles outside of Los Angeles. Um, his family, he grew up here. His family had a citrus orchard and uh, he grew up right here in this area. And this is where they, of course, set his library. Uh, so far, it is quite beautiful out front here. This fountain actually feels really nice. It's misting me. Nixon's presidency was very controversial. It's very well documented. I'm excited to see all the different things that they probably have inside there. Um, uh, probably up till recently, it was the most documented presidency, I would think, uh, just due to all the controversy around it. Um, Nixon was a, uh, a fan, I guess you would say, of public service. He was first elected to Congress in 1946, elected to the Senate in 1950, and he became such a star in the Senate that in 1952, Dwight D. Eisenhower selected him to be his vice president. Then Nixon ran for president in 1960, famously losing to JFK because of all the sweating in the first televised presidential debate, and ended up winning the presidency in 1968. We'll get into more why his presidency ended once we're inside, and I hope you guys will join me as we tour the Presidential Library of Richard Milhouse Nixon. Let's travel. Like with all presidential museums and libraries, you can come and do research. If you're researching a book, a movie, whatever you're doing, you can come and research all their documents that they have. This one has like 300,000 documents, thousands of hours of recordings, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. If you're doing anything around the Nixon name or library or whatever, or uh, a presidency, you should definitely come out and check it out. So this is the Casa Pacifica, which is Nixon. Pat and Richard Nixon's house. Uh, quite lovely, as you can see. Right on the beach with a railroad track right there. It's living the dream. So just to set the tone of the Nixon presidency, the 1960s um, were a very tumultuous time in America. I'm sure many of you were there. Um, for those of you that weren't, if you think our modern times are divisive and whatnot, 1960s, think of it this way, in eight years, four, four of our most famous leaders and a president were shot and killed. I mean. It's insane the kind of division that was in our country at the time. So Nixon comes along in 1968 at the, at the height of it, honestly. Uh, in fact, I think Martin Luther King, um, in fact, I think Malcolm X was murdered within a year of that. I'm, I'll put up the year at the bottom here. When I, haven't, I don't know off the top of my head, but I mean, he inherited a war he inherited this really crazy divisive time in America. And he tended to have a loose moral code when it came to politics. So that was a recipe for disaster. Oh, well, it would end up. But obviously it didn't start that way. In 68, when he came in, between 68, he went, won re-election in 72, did a lot of amazing things in a very tumultuous time. 
And uh, unfortunately, those things get lost in history because of how his presidency ended. desk drawer, reading glasses, a pen. Yes, please do. Okay. Uh, first of all, this is an exact replica right to the centimeter of the real old office. Everything in the office is a uh, replica. Okay. Anyway, the porcelain figurines were done by an artist named Beam out of Connecticut, and the Nixons collected them their whole married life. Wow. Uh, they all... Excuse me, they often gave them as gifts. Sure. Visiting dignitaries and friends. Uh, the carpet, well, the, first of all, the Oval Office is decorated uh, traditionally by the First Lady. Right. Pat Nixon decorated this. And the carpet is her main claim to fame. Blue and gold, colored to California. He was the only president that actually... Sure. Absolutely. Uh, the portrait on the wall is that of General George Washington. I tell you what I'm struck by, compared to the other ones I've seen at the libraries and at the just in photos, is how minimalist Nixon's Oval Office is. Most of them have lots of tables, lots more art, lots more things on the shelves. He just kept it very, very tight. Now, how about the desk? Was his desk one of the? Uh, yeah, please do. The presidents, when they become president, yeah. The choice of about seven desks right. to choose from. Um, the CPO desk, Hoover desk, Fort Roosevelt desk, uh, Resolute desk, Wilson desk, etc. Nixon chose this desk. It's the Wilson desk. Okay. He was vice president. He used it the whole time he was vice president. Gotcha. Uh, Mike Pence used it recently. Okay. Vice president. Kamala Harris is using it in her little annex office in the White House. In the actual office? Like, because I know a lot of the, the president and the vice president have two offices, right? Okay. One's the public. Her big office is in the executive office. Right. Executive office. Right. But she has a little office in the White House. She okay. Uses, and she uses the Roosevelt desk in her official office. No kidding. In executive office. So, uh, but anyway, uh, supposedly the story goes that Nixon thought that had something to do with Woodrow Oh, okay. It was, uh, Wilson connected to President Buchanan back in the 1800s. Oh. It was a desk made for him or built for him. No kidding. And, uh, that was the confusion. A lot of yeah. people don't realize it. Yeah. Every president from FDR on yeah. had a taping system. On no kidding. I did not know that. Yeah, everyone. Really? Everyone to install it. Okay. Manually operated. But wow. So they would have to open a door and press a go or stop. Gotcha. Yeah. Office, he recommended to Nixon to install, by that time the technology had caught up. Right. Well. He said a voice activated system would be much better for. I know, gotcha. The atmosphere of the conversation. Okay. Said, you know, you're on the couch with the president, you talk right. about detente, and you say, oh, excuse me, let me flip the switch here. Right. And yeah. Gone, you know. That's so, interesting. So his was the voice activated one. Microphones. Yeah. We're behind no two sconces. This one here. Okay. Six around the desk. There's a great uh, display. In yeah. The tour oh, okay, good. The, uh, oh, I'm excited to see it then. And, uh, about the taping system. That's awesome. Okay, I did not know that. That's a great fact. I did not know that. It makes sense though. I was just talking with the, the gentleman, the historian that is in the Oval Office, but Johnson had this safe put in, and that's where the CIA director would put uh, the Vietnam casualty numbers each morning. Um, that weighed very heavily on Johnson, who was president, obviously, before Nixon. And uh, uh, Nixon looked at it once, as according to him, but didn't want to look at it again. Um, later on, 
Daniel Ellsberg, a reporter, I believe. I forget what paper he was for, but he found all the Pentagon papers and found that they were hiding the actual casualty numbers and outed them. Um, that was a huge case, huge deal. But uh, yeah, that was that was early on. I think, uh, and this has been exhaustively tracked in time since, but. You know, we got into a war. We had this big sense of high after World War II where we had stomped out capital, you know, not capitalism. We had stomped out communism and, and you know, we were the big heroes. But when we got into Korea, we started seeing there was, it wasn't as easy as World War II. Not that it was easy, but it wasn't as definitive, I should say, the victory. In Vietnam, we got into and quickly realized it was gonna be the exact same situation or worse. And of course it was worse, but, uh, they just didn't want it to be as bad. And then each president that would come in didn't want to be the one that made it worse, but they wanted to be the one that stopped it. It just became this trying to hold water in your hands and it just it just kept slipping away. Um, it was a real shame. My dad served in, in the Vietnam War. A lot of American families uh, had men that served. Um, and a lot of them didn't come home. But uh, I was fortunate enough that my dad did. All the anti-war demonstrations were a huge part of the late 60s, early 70s, huge. <clears throat> of course, our prisoners of war. Many POWs and MIAs that we never have to see again, and thankfully many came home, but. <clears throat> That's a very famous photo. Reunited. Nick said, uh, further the space program. He's definitely famous for that. Uh, and one interesting fact is when Nixon came into office in 68, there was over uh, 500,000 troops already in Vietnam. Um, when he left office, there was around 20,000. Um, I think probably if he had served out his last term, he probably would have gotten the rest of them out. But, uh, yeah, Ford ended up being the guy that got the rest out in the fall of uh, Saigon. I think it's Saigon. It's that really famous photograph of the, uh, of the helicopter trying to take off the U.S. Embassy roof, and it's just got people running up, up to it. It's full. It's a really sad situation. One that we just saw repeated, unfortunately, in Afghanistan not too long ago. Apollo 11, Moon Rock. So there's the, the food that the astronauts had. We got pork and scallop potatoes and bacon bars. Cause you gotta have bacon. Nixon did establish the Environmental Protection Agency uh, with the Clean Air Act. I think it was the Clean Air Act of 1970. Um, because we were already heading down a really dark path on that. Uh, that definitely cleaned up our air a lot. It's taken some hits of late, but uh, hopefully we can get back on track and keep cleaning it. And here it is, the infamous recorder. This recorded over 3,500 hours over two years. It recorded phone calls, it recorded in-office visits. Um, and of course, the, the Watergate tapes, the infamous conversations we've all heard, and then of course, the missing 19 minutes that was subpoenaed and ended up prompting Nixon to resign office. Um, a month after he resigned, of course, uh, Ford pardoned him in September 1974. Very controversial for Ford, and of course, it cost him re-election. Pat Nixon. Got some outfits and some shoes and a handbag. Some of her stationery. And of course, Nixon's foreign policy had a huge push. 
He opened up China and relationship with Russia. There's this famous photo. They made a movie just about this photo because, uh, if I remember correctly, Elvis brought his pistol <laughs> into the White House. This was the rise of the women's liberation movement. Uh, it really came into its own during the Nixon presidency. Of course, civil rights were drastically moved ahead as well. I believe that was Julie Nixon's wedding. I think that was their oldest daughter. I could be wrong about that. Dr. Chet Ward, the presidential doctor. But these are all times in their office. Sesame Street, of course, started in 1969 during the presidency. It's still running today. Richard Nixon belt buckle. So there's a list right here on the wall that coincides with all the numbers that are on each thing. I really like that actually. F1 is guns and bullet in box. Gift to President Nixon. Oh, this is the, okay, that's right. That's what the story was. So this is the gun that, that Elvis brought in. They made a movie about this, the Elvis and Nixon meeting, but he brought this gun to give as a gift to the president into the White House. And uh, this is a gift from Elvis Presley, and they got it here in the library. That's awesome. Ah, yes, all the not always flattering likenesses of Nixon. Think metric. Yeah, that didn't catch on. <laughs> I like that uh, cookie jar, though. Look at that. It's the Uncle Sam top hat. Elections, election 68 as a board game. Wow. Richard Nixon signed golf balls. Still in the box. This picture of Nixon at his home. La Casa Pacifica. Doll, oh, look at the sweet boy. Him's a sweet boy. Wow. Very beautiful home. It's about women's liberation. Wow. You have to imagine how important that was because back then, women still had to ask their husband's permission for medical procedures, for bank accounts and credit cards, all that. Um, that was a huge step during the early 70s toward equality. So, June 17, 1972, a group of men are caught in the Democratic headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, D.C. They get bailed out very quickly. There's some confusion of where they came from, how they came together. That is the, the thread that starts to get pulled. Huge story, of course you can look it up if you don't already know it, but that led to finding out that Richard Nixon had led many of these sabotage, quote unquote, missions by the plumbers or, you know, a, a small team of ex-CIA operatives or current freelance CIA operatives paid with cash for many, many years. Um, they would do all sorts of things from, from stealing reporters' shoes at a convention to breaking in and trying to bug the Democratic headquarters at the Watergate Hotel. So it was a massive story. This is a wing dedicated to that, talking about all the different stories. A lot of people started coming out of the woodwork. 
and it just started growing and growing and growing. Nixon, of course, had said he had nothing to do with it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, finally, more and more testimony, more and more people taking plea deals. And then they found out about the taping system. They, of course, subpoenaed his tapes. He gave his tapes over eventually, but there was two gaps, I believe. Uh, 19 minutes was at least one of them. Maybe they equaled 19 minutes. But it was very obvious they had been erased. And right after that, when they subpoenaed him to testify, he knew the end was nigh, so he went ahead and resigned August of 1974 and went on to retirement. He was, of course, pardoned a month later by Gerald Ford, uh, which cost Ford the re-election. Uh, it was a very controversial decision. People wanted Nixon to pay, you know, with his freedom, but that did not happen. And uh, the rest is history. Of course, one of the most famous parts of the Watergate scandal would be the reporting of Bob Wood Woodward and um, Carl Bernstein. Uh, Woodward and Bernstein are, are the Washington Post reporters that broke the story. They kept pulling those threads, kept chasing things down. Um, it's very famous. Uh, of course, the movie All the President's Men really goes into great detail on it. And that is a movie that still holds up suspense-wise. It's really good. You even know the outcome, and it's still great. Starring Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman. They made it back in the late 70s, I think it was. A fantastic movie. But, yeah, it's an amazing story. I will say kudos to the Nixon Library for including this in here. Um, after my visit to the Clinton Library, I was sort of disappointed that there's no mention of the Lewinsky scandal, even though that is a massive part of his presidency. You know, I'm not big on whitewashing history. I think if you want to, if we want to say what happened, say what happened. This is part of history. This is the history books. So kudos to the Nixon Library for dedicating some, some space to it, because this is part of the story. Leaving the White House, the famous two-handed pose. This is a reproduction of their homestead here in Yorba Linda. Nixon Farm, 1920. Duke University, graduate, before heading back to California. Richard Nixon's desk when he was an attorney. Join the Navy, of course, to go fight in World War II.
1946, his first campaign for Congress, wins it. Wins re-election in 48, I believe. Maybe it was 50. But that's when he moved on to Senator. Ah, yes. The Hiss case, a very famous case that made him famous. Oh, that's a very famous photo. Eisenhower selects him as vice president. They win. And serves for eight years. Infamous presidential debate of 1960. This is what they say cost Nixon the election. <clears throat> JFK was made for TV. Uh, he was just, he was younger, he understood it, he understood its power. Nixon did not have a clue it was this new medium and, and they were just going to televise these presidential debates for the first time. Well, the lights on stage, which is why they have them up here. <laughs> the lights on stage were very hot, and he was constantly wiping sweat away. Which, by the way, totally I would too. I sweat all the time. But uh, it made him look very untrustworthy, and JFK just seemed very relaxed and very at ease. And uh, that made a huge difference at the polls. Of course, he came back. He learned how to do it well, and in 1968, won the presidency. That's a cool display. Wow. Oh, that's neat. I've got screens in the windows. Influencing everything around him. I decided early on in our administration that we were going to seek good relations with Egypt and others of Israel's neighbors. If those interests are better served, they have the United States and France of Israel's neighbors and potential enemies. I really love this display room. This is really cool. So not only do they have this really cool lit Nixon statue, but as he's writing, the walls change. Everything that he's writing on there kind of comes up and goes. They go through different history uh, moments that he would have sat in his study writing. That's really cool. That's neat. Of course, all the windows change different screens. That's pretty Just neat. This is a cool display. The Homecoming. They made a movie about this interview as well, the Frost Nixon interview. Definitely a good movie as well. His desk in later years. Office in later years, I should say. Culture. Nixon and pop culture. Got some fan art fighting a saber tooth. You got the mask from several movies. Uh, what was the one? Uh, Point Break, right? Let's see. Yeah. Got some comic book covers. Of course, the head of Nixon from Futurama. 
Lebowski Fest. That's funny. Vote McGovern. That's pretty funny. Kind of all Andy Warhol throwback. Of course, you got the Elvis Nixon movie like we talked about before. And the Frost Nixon movie. Another uh, Futurama print. Bobblehead. Very cool. Interactions with presidents when he was, or presidents and dignitaries when he, after he left office. Reagan, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Ford together, Bush, Clinton. Stayed a part of it and involved as a figure, historical figure. Pat passed in 1993. They were the same age when they passed away. He passed away a year later. Wow, look at all those presidents. Mm. Sometimes you will be very discouraged. It is sad to lose. But the greatest sadness is to travel through life without knowing either victory or defeat. for some campaign buttons like they have elsewhere but I'm not seeing any which is a bummer to find something else there's a baseball collectible plates Nixon's the one. Those records they used to send out in different things, um, like a magazine or something. So it's like a it's like a paper, but it would still play on the a record player, which is actually really kind of cool. I think I might want that because <laughs> I remember having those when I was a kid. Not that exact one, but several like it. Ah, here we go. Here's some campaign buttons. I don't know exactly how much each one is. I kind of like to get one. So the actual reason that the library was actually built right here is because it is on the grounds of the Nixon birth home. So uh, in 1912, 1912, I believe he was born in 1912 or 13. No, it was 12. Uh, he was born in January of 1912 uh, here at this home. I'm not sure if he was born at the home or if he was born at a nearby hospital, but they do still have his home, which is right at the um, edge of the library grounds. So we're gonna go check that out. place they have the final resting place of both Pat and Richard. Um, the Nixons were buried here a year apart. Um, so they were together for 
most of their lives and the rest of eternity. Um, they've got quite a beautiful view that they get to look at here. It's really lovely, actually. It's really nice. Thus far of my presidential museum and library tours, this is uh, so far the most beautiful one. Um, I'm sure the California setting helps uh, with all the different type of trees and foliage that they have outside, but I mean, it's gorgeous. Reminds me of something that would honestly be in Palm Springs. It's beautiful. Nixon's helicopters right here. That's pretty neat. That's cool. So they've actually still got it. Look at that. Got the bar over here. Gotta have the bar. Presidential seal. Wow. This is the one. Well, I got my stamp and some collectibles and another great visit to another presidential library and museum. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. We'll see you at the next one. Bye now.